welcome everyone to this session on building and testing cloud applications locally using local stack. And before beginning my talk, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to the team at Python Web Conference. This is the second time that I'm speaking at this particular conference and it is quite exciting to be talking about local stack over here. So just as a general introduction from my side, uh, I'm working as an engineer at local stack. And previously I have been a part of various open source programs like Google Summer of Code, Google Season of Docs, just to name a few. So if you want to reach out to me, uh, you can connect me by my Twitter handle, which is Hirsch underscore Casper, or by my GitHub ID, which is Hirsch Casper itself. So without spending a lot of time on introductions, let's just get started with our session's main topics. So in today's session, we are going to be talking about local stack and how you can use local stack to essentially build and test your AWS cloud and serverless applications. We will try to understand how this whole cloud testing landscape kind of looks like and how does local stack help the developers to test their applications completely offline and on their own local machine without having to connect to some remote cloud provider. Going next, I'll try to showcase you some interesting demonstrations of how you can use various local stack AWS features and some integrations to basically do things offline. Uh, sorry, not offline, basically on your local machine because if I disconnect from my internet, this whole session would be gone. Uh, so in these demonstrations, I'm going to be showing like how you can create your AWS infra using Terraform, how you can hot reload your Lambda functions on your local machine, and how you can even deploy uh, your PyTorch machine learning models using SageMaker and more of these. Uh, next, I will be talking a bit about some internal specifics of local stack and how we exactly maintain parity. Because when a lot of people hear about local stack, when they see a few of these stuff that we have written and published, some people are like, okay, local stack cannot achieve each and everything. And this is kind of true, but whatever we have achieved till now, maybe I can just talk about it a bit. And I can mention of how we can maintain parity with AWS and how we are essentially building our own snapshot testing framework. And finally, I will be sharing some advanced collaboration patterns that we are building to assist the cloud developers. And finally, end everything on a really exciting closing note. And I'm completely open to have any questions uh, during this entire session. I'll try to take a few of these questions up during uh, agenda switches, or else I'll just take all of the questions uh, at the end of this whole collective session. So let's get started. So before jumping into the demonstrations, let us talk about local stack and let us try to understand the purpose of a project like local stack over here. So before jumping into local stack, let us just discuss a bit about what are the various challenges with modern cloud development. I guess most of you who are kind of tinkering with cloud, serverless, uh, DevOps, and all of these things, you might have noticed that in today's world, local development essentially has a lot of dependencies on the cloud. It is not limited to some niche services, but even things like databases, virtual machines, object storage, and more of these things altogether. And I guess it won't be like quite a heresy to kind of equate this current development model to the one that we had in 1980s or 1990s. Essentially, we had these mainframe developers who had to write some code, send it to some central authority, and maybe they would get the results after a day or two mentioning like, okay, this is what was the result of your particular code. And they have to, again, play around with this, make sure that it is working. And this same thing we can particularly notice in today's cloud development model as well. The whole inter inner development model loop is quite slow. It is quite tedious. And every time you make a change on your cloud infrastructure or your application that is going cloud native, you have to deploy to the real cloud to make sure that everything is pretty much working fine. And though it might offer you a high fidelity because now you can test things against the real APIs, it is often slow because sometimes creating these resources might take up minutes. And it is also quite intricate, like you're creating some real AWS resources that is obviously gonna cost you some money. And this is simply not quite scalable, especially if you're working in a team that is pretty small and that is pretty much on a budget right now. With the rise of this whole cloud infrastructure using code like Terraform or CDK, this inner loop is further complicated because now everyone is trying to test against this infrastructure and everyone is deploying their changes on the cloud and this is slowly spiking, spiking up the cloud costs at the end of the day because the resources might not be cleaned. Some of these dangling resources might end up on your account for months and maybe even years. And slowly, this whole environment might just head towards an explosion. This is something that is not pretty much scalable unless and until you have a lot of dollars to burn upon your cloud development journey, which is something that a lot of companies don't want. 
So to fix around this problem, there has been a lot of ways uh, which people have tried out so that they can make sure that their cloud applications are testable and they can pretty much test everything out before they are deploying their applications on the real production. I guess the very first one out there is mocking. Mocking is a classic thing that most of the cloud developers do uh, to basically mock out these cloud APIs. So they, they can write their own mocks, they can write their own API steps and all of those things so that they can realistically test uh, their infrastructure changes uh, through these tools itself. I'm not sure about other uh, cloud providers like Azure or GCP, but in case of uh, AWS, AWS has a pretty famous uh, mocking library, which is called as Moto. So Moto is not under AWS itself, but it's a library that allows you to easily walk out your tests based upon your AWS infrastructure. So creating some S3 buckets or doing things with other services altogether, you can pretty much handle that through Moto itself. But again, it is pretty much mocking. You're not creating something in real. And uh, to solve this problem, we have got service emulation. So a lot of these cloud service providers have been providing these service emulation tools, something like DynamoDB local or Step Functions local that basically is pro that basically offers you individual services, but they are pretty much the stripped down versions. So now you can at least test some of these things over there. But again, if you want to move further with this, you need to rely upon cloud emulation. And this cloud emulation integrates multiple services altogether. It provides you a sense of something happening in realistic way. And you can pretty much test your infrastructure as a code or your application deployments pretty much on your local machine. And I guess the final part is the staging environments, which is pretty much common with everyone out there. You can run your application against cloud itself. But again, this is something that most of the teams don't find scalable because now they have, they have to run everything on the cloud. Uh, they have to take into account how many developer branches are there, how many developers are trying to get to the cloud, or what is the cloud cost that we are getting out of this whole thing. So as I mentioned before, this is pretty much like what the classic mocking looks like. Uh, this is a code sample that is picked up from Motos documentation. And over here, you can see that I'm using Boto to create my S3 bucket and just applying some logic using AWS and asserting whether my bucket has been created or not, or whether I can send some data inside my bucket itself. Regarding service emulation, we have got multiple tools out there. We have got DynamoDB local, Step Functions local, SAM local. On the side of Azure, we have got Azure Write, Cosmos DB emulator, Signal R emulator. But one of the main problems with this service emulation is that, as I said before, these are stripped down versions of real services. Second, they don't have a sense of API compatibility. I guess a lot of people I have seen in my own experience have been complaining about DynamoDB local because it is nothing real like the actual DynamoDB. So people run into issues here and there and they don't have a realistic way of actually fixing them out. Apart from this, there is also a reduced complexity because now like you can simplify your implementation, but the problem is like you don't have any service integration and you still cannot test your infrastructure as a code integration. So if you're writing something like Terraform or CDK or CloudFormation, you cannot actually test them uh, against these service emulation tools. So to solve this problem, we have got local stack. Uh, I guess since most of you people know the context of this particular talk, local stack is a completely fully functional local cloud stack. And you can pretty much have nearly eight plus AWS services running on your local machine inside a single Docker container so that you can easily test your applications, your uh, Lambda functions, your exotic APIs like Athena or Glue on your local machine itself. You don't have to go to the cloud to actually do these things out and you can simply centralize everything on your local machine itself. So just imagine you're working upon an application and it has got multiple dependencies upon Lambda or S3 or DynamoDB without even having to deploy them to, the, to some AWS cloud. You can simply run this on your local machine. You can test your changes. You can validate your changes. You can push it to a CI pipeline, which again runs local stack. And once you are completely fine that, okay, my application uh, tests are working fine, my application's functionality is working fine, now you can deploy to the actual production which uses the real AWS APIs. So a lot of people say that local stack is a mocking tool. Again, I would reiterate upon that. Local stack is an emulation tool. Basically, it allows us to emulate multiple services altogether inside a single Docker container. We do mock some services, like for example, you want to create some EC2 instances. In that case, we might mock them. But if you're using a certain pricing tier, we might also be able to provide you some Docker instances that actually behave as Amazon AMI so that you can actually SSH inside them and you can test your things out. With the help of local stack, uh, every service that you see right here, all of the APIs are accessible under local host 4566. 
This is actually our edge port, uh, which allows us to interact with the services, which makes our jobs easier because now you can use this particular URL in your uh, AWS SDKs. You can use them with some uh, infrastructure as a code providers like Terraform or Pulumi or CDK or CloudFormation so that you don't have to like uh, get into the headache of like testing them against some individual stripped down versions. And with the local stack, we are not just limiting to some local AWS services. We also have some collaboration features that allows multiple cloud developers to collaborate amongst each other. We have the CI integration, which allows you to run local stack on your CI environment like GitHub Actions or Travis or Circle CI. And this pretty much makes the lives of cloud developers a lot easier. So uh, I can just basically show you how a 10,000 foot view of local stack looks like. Again, as I had said, as I have said before, local stack is not a replacement for AWS on production environments, but local stack can be a replacement for you depending upon your use case on your developer machine or your continuous integration environments. With local stack, you can test your applications on your local machine. Once you pretty much find that your application works out, you can push your entire changes to some GitHub or GitLab repository, and you can let a pipeline to basically build your code, test your code, and make sure that everything is working fine. And with local stack, you don't have to get into the headache of deleting those resources. Local stack is completely ephemeral in nature, which means that everything is pretty much inside a Docker container. So if you delete the Docker container or if you stop the Docker container, all of the resources that you have created simply vanishes. And uh, this is something that is quite revolutionary for a lot of cloud developers, because most of the cloud developers I know always run into this terror that they have deployed this infrastructure, but now some resources are pretty much dangling and they have to go to the AWS console, find those resources, delete them out before it actually starts incurring some significant cost. So with local stack, you can pretty much do end-to-end -end testing before even deploying your application. And this is a game changer for a lot of cloud application developers. So if you have not checked out local stack before, uh, we have a pretty vibrant open source community and open source code base over here. So some 46,000 stars and we are slowly inching towards 50,000 milestone. Uh, we did our uh, 1.4.0 release last month. So it pretty much means that local stack is pretty stable and we have a lot of AWS services under our like local cloud emulation suite. So you can check this out and you can use this opportunity to install local stack. All that you need to do is to install our PyP package, which is pip install local stack. And once that is installed, you can just head over to local stack start dash T and this will pull our official Docker image and it, it will start the local stack in detached mode. So now that we have pretty much understood uh, up till this point, now what I'm gonna do is like, I'll try to showcase some of the local stack integrations and services and how you can pretty much play around with local stack in different end-to-end uh, -end, uh, cloud development scenarios. So before that, uh, let me first talk about the integrations altogether. So with the help of these integrations, you can pretty much like start using local stack with your favorite tooling systems or frameworks out there. So local stack uh, is not just limited to like having a Docker image. Once local stack is started and once it is exposed, uh, as, like once it is once the uh, port 4566 six is exposed on the edge port, uh, now you can pretty much use local stack with any of the tools out there. If you're using infrastructure as a code tooling like Terraform or Pulumi, uh, you can pretty much configure your local stack container to pretty much work with them. We have our own wrapper scripts so that they can help you with the uh, setup. If you want to work with language SDKs, all that you need to do is to set up your uh, environment, your account ID and the edge port where uh, local stack is running and you're good to go. If you're using developer tools like AWS CLI, CloudFormation, CDK, we have first class support for that and some really good implementations and sample applications, which you can use to pretty much revolutionize your development environment. And if you're using some other frameworks like test containers or serverless, or maybe some CI CD systems, you can find all of that documentation on local stack docs itself. So you can just go to user guides. You can check out the various integrations and the various CI providers that we work with. And this will pretty much make your adoption journey for local stack uh, quite easier. So the good thing about local stack is that it's pretty configurable. And I guess I'll just use the demo as a way to showcase that. But with local stack, you can pretty much configure a lot of things. You can configure your network. You can configure your services. You can configure your lambdas. Uh, debugging capabilities, persistence, and more of that. Like if I can just quickly go to my configuration page, uh, it can show you like how you can use different configuration options to make your lives easier. For example, if you're using local stack and you need more verbose lo logs, uh, you can just set up debug is equal to one, and this will make sure that 
local stack is logging all of the information, all of the AWS API calls simply on your terminal itself. Uh, apart from this, we have various other configuration variables like we have got persistence. With persistence, uh, local stack will not act as an ephemeral container. Uh, if you're enabling persistence and if you're running local stack and let's say creating some AWS infrastructure in the meantime, persistence will make sure that the next time you start local stack, all of that AWS uh, infrastructure that you created on your local machine still remains over there. So this is pretty handy for people who want to test things over and over again, but they don't want to go into the pain of deploying an infrastructure, maybe because it takes a few minutes to deploy on local stack. Apart from this, we have got many other configuration options, which completely depends upon your use case and upon your uh, particular like ideas of using local stack. So you can simply go over them and you can check the things out so that you can start implementing them. For example, we have got this pretty interesting configuration variable called as enforce IAM. Just imagine testing your IAM policies on your local machine and it makes sure that everything is tested. And if a particular IAM policy fails, if a particular resource which has a different IAM policy is trying to access a different resource, it will actually make sure that your deployment fails and you can get to see that, say that okay, this is something that I can basically improve in my own setup. So you can completely emulate things like IEM so that you can pretty much do security hardening for your AWS infrastructure. And this makes local stack such an awesome tool altogether. So if you want to check out more, you can just go to our documentation and this can enable you to check out the things that you really want to do with local stack and how you can actually change the behavior of local stack and how you can alter that. Uh, cool, so I guess we have reached the point where we can actually get into some uh, demos. So the first demo is all about like scraping the GitHub trending with Lambda functions. I guess most of you folks might be aware that GitHub has this pretty interesting trending page. What we are gonna actually do is like kind of scrape that so that we can get to see uh, what, are, what are all the repositories that are pretty much trending right now. But we will be doing that using uh, local stacks Lambda implementation. So just imagine running your Lambda functions locally. And to assist us with this particular thing, uh, we are gonna use Terraform. So with Terraform, we have got a script called as Terraform local. So if you have never used that, you can just install it using pip install Terraform local. And this will allow you to make sure that all of the AWS API requests that Terraform is making to actually AWS, they're actually being routed to local stack so that you don't actually deploy any sort of resource on the real AWS cloud itself. So I can show you the demo for that. Maybe I will jump on my VS code. So here I am. Uh, cool, so let me just jump to my demo one. And over here we have a very simplistic Lambda function which uses beautiful soup uh, to scrape this GitHub trending page. And based upon this, we have this Lambda front handler which takes up all this JSON data and it is just returning back all this data uh, over here. So if I take a look at my Terraform file, what I'm basically doing is like I'm creating this Lambda resource and I'm configuring an AWS uh, Lambda function URL. So now you don't have to use uh, a separate AWS services like service like API Gateway uh, to access your Lambdas as REST APIs. You can pretty much use the function URL config to convert your Lambda to a REST API and you can just start using it. Uh, to showcase that, uh, I have a simple make file which you can use. So what I'm gonna do is like, I'll just make sure that my local stack is running or not. I hope it's not running right now. Let me just check really quick. So if you want to check if your local stack is running, okay, local stack is running. So maybe I'll stop my local stack container first. And all of this can be simply controlled using uh, the local stack CLI. If you're not a fan of using CLIs and everything, we have a Docker extension as well, which you can install via the Docker desktop. And this will give you a pretty easy option to just get started with this. So in this case, I'm gonna uh, start my local stack in detached mode. Uh, so all of my AWS services are inside Docker. And if I want to check if my services are really available there or not, I can just go over here and I can see localhost uh, 4566 and just check out the health. And this will list out all the AWS services that are available inside my local stack container. Uh, cool. So now that we have done this, uh, maybe let us uh, try to deploy uh, this particular URL config uh, right here. So in this case, what I'm just gonna do is like, I can just say df local in it. And this is actually going to initialize my Terraform provider right over here. So this is going to pull uh, HashiCorp's AWS module. This might take just a second here and there. Awesome. And once that we have done that, we can actually go and say df local apply. And as soon as we do this, uh, 
I can maybe go to my local stack logs. And over here, you can get to see that uh, Terraform is now sending up API requests uh, to the local stack instance itself. Okay. Cool. So there might be some issues right over here. I'm not sure about that. Okay, let me just use this thing in the hope that it works. Cool, so let us wait for a few seconds here to finish this Terraform apply operation. You can say yes. And this will actually start creating my AWS Lambda function URL config. And if I actually go back to my logs right over here, you can get to see that now the Lambda function has actually started creation and we have this particular logging framework that enables you to actually see that our API calls are being successful. And if you go back uh, to my previous terminal, you can get to see that our function URL config has been deployed. So what I can do right now is that I can copy this thing and I can just simply say curl x get. And I can use the JQ processor. And this is going to call my Lambda function uh, through my local stack itself. This has been deployed on my local stack instance. If you can just check out this particular URL. Okay, there seems to be some trouble. Okay, it seems like the demo gods are not with me. So maybe I'll stop, stop my local stack because all of these resources are pretty ephemeral in nature. And I can just use this make file to like send in all, all of my API requests right here. So I can just say like uh, right over here, main.tf. Yeah, so I have this handy make run command, which is going to create my infrastructure on my own uh, local machine. And this is pretty handy. Okay, now I know why this particularly failed to deploy. Okay, so now the function is being created. This might take a few seconds. And based upon that, the function URL config will also be created alongside this. Okay, so seems like there has been a problem again. I guess I might need to delete my Terraform state files. Uh, maybe stop my local stack instance. Ah, this has been a pain. And maybe start it once again. And now let's do a make run. So let us try to create a function now, which I hope should work out. Uh, my bad. Okay, so this is pretty much taking some time over here. So in this case, what I can possibly recommend to you is like go and check out this application sample on GitHub itself. So it is present on this particular repository and I can maybe share this link on the Slack workspace. And I guess this should allow you to check out the sample and like maybe run it on your side because things are pretty much not working on my end for some particular reason. I can maybe do a make clean, uh, but yes, maybe we can do this some other time. Cool, uh, apart from this, we have uh, another application sample that I wanted to really showcase and I hope this one works pretty much quite well. And this is about hot reloading your Lambda functions on your local machine. So with the local stack, uh, you cannot just deploy your Lambda functions and test them out, but you can also make some changes to your Lambda function and check if uh, like, you can also like make some changes to the Lambda function and test your Lambda functions to make sure that your changes are pretty much over there without having to deploy it all over again. So let us say you created a Lambda function and this time uh, you don't have to zip it up once again and you don't have to redeploy and update your Lambda configurations. All that you need to do is to basically make some changes, go to your demo application and see uh, like the basic output for this so that you can validate if your changes are over there or not. So in this case, how local stack does this is because we have this executor process which works out with all of the Lambda runtimes that we have implemented. 
And we have also this code mounting functionality using a special S3 bucket name called as hot reload. And with this functionality, what you can do is like, this S3 key will be pointing to your directory in the file system. And what LocalStack will basically do is like, it will pick up the directory right from there. And it doesn't have to reload your Lambda functions over and over again, if you want to test your changes. All that you need to do is to change your Lambda. And now you can get to see that reflected upon LocalStack's uh, Lambda itself. To just give a demo for that, I can maybe go to the demo too, uh, just to showcase that. I can go to demo two over here. Yeah. So in demo two, I guess I have a pretty simplistic Lambda function. So no additional dependencies right over here. But what you can see is like, it's a pretty simple script right here. Uh, what we are passing to this as uh, like a Lambda event is that we are passing out an action, which can include square, square root, increment, decrement, or a particular number. And then we are going to send out a response to them. So in this case, I have some scripts handy that I can pretty much use. And I'm setting up a config, which is called as Lambda remote Docker. That pretty much allows me to mount, uh, like mount these Lambda functions through my file system itself inside the local stack container so that I don't have to deploy it over and over again by using zip or using container images or whatsoever. So now that our uh, local stack instance has started, what I can do is like, I can just create this Lambda function. In this case, you might notice that I have used this S3 bucket uh, key, which is called as hot reload. Sorry, I have used this S3 bucket name, which is hot reload. And I have used this key, which is pointing to my particular directory. And I'm just setting up the handler, the runtime and the role right over here. So what I can do is like, I can just call this particular function right over here. So I'm setting this a payload by specifying that the action should be square, the number should be three. And if I go back to my output.txt, you can get to see that the result out here is nine. Now what I'm gonna do is like something that's pretty interesting. I can go to my Lambda function and instead of result, I can just say to it like, let's, uh, let's name this output. So we are gonna save this. And now what we can possibly do is like, we can call this Lambda function once again. We are not deploying it once again. We are not re like zipping it up or like updating our uh, Lambda config. All that I'm doing is like invoking the Lambda function that, that I've already created. But this time, this Lambda functions S3 key is pointing to my current directory. And as soon as I click this, uh, this is gonna take some time. Now I can go to output.txt and over here, you can see that the output is basically having output over here. So uh, just as I mentioned right over here, you can change it back once again, and it would be immediately reflected back uh, on our Lambda function. So this is pretty dynamic in nature. And what it basically allows Lambda developers to do is to like test the things on their local machine. They don't have to rezip it, redeploy it on the uh, AWS console and test things out over there. You can simply do everything uh, from your ID itself. And lastly, we have got this SageMaker model inference. So a lot of people uh, mentioned that uh, local stack has first class support on lambdas or S3 or some other common AWS services. But what about some exotic services like SageMaker or maybe Athena or Glue, if you want to run some ETL jobs or some databases like RDS and all of these. So with local stack, you can pretty much do all of these things with a certain reliability. Like in this particular demonstration, I can show you like how you can host your PyTorch machine learning models using local stack itself. And I've actually like created an MNIST model in SageMaker by using the official PyTorch image. And we can use a SageMaker endpoint so that we can access the mod model and we can directly invoke it inside local stack container or using some Python SDK like Boto itself. So uh, there is this demo, pretty handy demo right here. So I can maybe go to that. And uh, you will find the sample again on local stack samples itself. So you can just search for SageMaker inference and you can get to see it. Uh, to run the sample, we need this particular Docker image right here, which I've already done before this session because it's gonna take out at least 20 or 25 minutes to pull on your local machine. So all that I need to do is maybe I can stop local stack once to make sure uh, that everything starts from an ephemeral state. And now I can start my local stack instance once again. So as soon as I do this, what I can do is like, I can uh, run this script right here, uh, which is gonna start my SageMaker inference. And if we take a look at this particular script, uh, our local stack endpoint is specified to this edge, edge port, which we have specified over here. Uh, we have a model bucket, we have the tar in which we, we have all this data set and everything. We have the container image, we have the Amazon resource name. And over here, we are deploying the model using uh, local stack SageMaker. We are awaiting for the endpoint. We are showcasing the predictions. 
we are running this uh, model inference inside the container first and then inside Boto so that we can showcase both of these things over here. If you want to test things out using a serverless manner, you can simply go over here and you can uncomment this, uh, but that's totally up to you. So in this case, you can see like our result has been pretty successful. Uh, we have invoked it by Boto. So in this case, like it is three, two, and in the other case, it is zero, three. Again, like this is pretty much helpful for machine learning developers who want to test things out like on their local machine without even having to go to some AWS console or some using some AWS services over here. And we are rapidly working upon expanding the API coverage for these kind of services because it would allow you to like test things reliably before you actually move to the cloud itself. And as you can see, like everything is being logged to our logging framework and you can pretty much see like our API requests have been pretty successful. Uh, cool, so apart from this, uh, LocalStack also has a very handy web user interface, which you can access by going to app.localstack.cloud. It is supposed to be like a very simplified version of the AWS console itself, uh, which has got some support for 25 plus AWS services. So if I go to uh, app.localstack.cloud, okay, this is on a guest window, so I might not be able to access that. But over there, you can pretty much do, do things using the graphical user interface itself. All that you need to have is your local uh, local stack image up and running, and all of the AWS resources that you're creating using local stacks web application, you can pretty much access all of that using uh, like web user interface. It's a lot like you can also do things on your local machine as well. We also have this functionality called a stack insights. And these stack insights basically allow you to analyze how many API requests you have sent uh, in the past, how many of these API requests have been successful, how many of them have failed, what kind of integration or client have you used on your site. And you can pretty much have an estimation of how much uh, you're actually spending on cloud by doing some local development and testing. And finally, we have got some other features like cloud pods or team collaboration features, which I can briefly touch base uh, at the end of the session. Cool, so uh, now that we have almost got over with local stack and how it is being used, maybe we can talk a bit about the technical details about how local stack actually does things after all. So to talk about this, what I'm gonna explain is Amazon service server framework and how it basically allows us to implement these AWS APIs in a pretty handy manner uh, on local stack. So now when I talk about uh, cloud service providers like AWS or Azure, they have always these inherent complexities like People are always skeptical uh, when we say that you can do the same things as you do in AWS uh, on local stack as well, pretty much on your local machine. And then people come and ask us like, how do you actually handle all of this complexity? Because AWS is a pretty distributed and complex system. So in our case, uh, we should not be like worrying about that because we are pretty much doing things on your local machine. Local stack is not there to serve as a production ready uh, like tooling after all. It's, it is just supposed to be like something that can be used for development and testing. So we always make some very simplified assumptions about a lot of the services. Like if we talk about Lambda or maybe SQS, these are very complex services, but it is not very complex to implement on our side. Maybe just providing uh, the users a CRUD functionality is more than enough to enable these kind of use cases. So what actually happens here is that every AWS service that you particularly see has a very well-defined API and a protocol specification. This is done using Smithy, which is kind of like a language SDK that AWS internally uses uh, to make sure that everything is being communicated across teams. So what we within our local stack team did is actually build out something that's called as the AWS server framework, which we just call as ASF. The AWS name is kind of a pun over here because it has got no affiliation with AWS, but it is still a thing that allows us to reliably build our API structure uh, test our functionality against the real AWS cloud and make sure that our users know that this API is covered well by the integration test and the parity test, and these APIs are not. So with this Smithy SDK, what AWS is basically doing is like, they have this internal structure of defining their APIs in a declarative, declarative manner. And all of these specifications are completely available in open source. We are not taking these specifications in a private manner from AWS, and it is available in a repository called as Boto Core. Now, Boto Core is an internal repository for uh, the AWS Python SDK. It has also got function like the internal functionalities for AWS CLI, if I'm not wrong. And what teams are basically doing within AWS is that they are using these SDKs to generate all the client SDKs as well and the client documentation itself. So now with these specifications available, what we can basically do is like we can pick up on them and we can start creating uh, our own uh, like specification on top of it. 
So at the end of the day, what we're basically getting is a stub generation, which pretty much generates all of the API stubs for us uh, using a scaffold script that we have developed. And these stubs are basically like Python representations of various AWS services as shapes and services. And we can start implementing operations on them so that we can actually implement those function definitions. In most of the cases, we have to write our own code to make sure that this particular uh, API or library is actually being emulated. In other cases, we depend upon Moto, which is a fantastic open source library that I've already showcased you before, or some other open source technologies like for RDS, we just use Postgres SQL. For DynamoDB, we just use DynamoDB local. Uh, so these AWS APIs are updated almost, uh, I guess, every week. So if you go to the local stacks open source uh, open source repository, you can see that every Monday we have a workflow that runs and it actually automatically updates all of our API stubs right over here. So with the help of this, what we can also do is like, we can also, we have also started developing our parity testing framework. And this parity testing framework basically allows us to run all our local stack tests against a real AWS. So we are not kind of shooting in the dark when we're trying to implement the AWS APIs. We are kind of having a realistic way of test these things out. And what we do is like we run these tests on both AWS and local stack to make sure that whatever API implementations we are doing, it is actually correct. And it is something that the users will find helpful. And we also have this ASF metric collection utility. And what we can basically do is like we can collect all of the execution details so that we can further iterate on it and we can further improve our service providers. So with this done, I guess I'll just take the last five minutes to talk about some of the advanced collaboration patterns and features that we have been developing. Uh, one of the uh, new features that we have been working pretty hard upon is cloud pods. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, local stack is pretty epiphemeral in nature. Uh, and we have this one feature called as persistence, which allows you to persist your local AWS infrastructure so that you can resume it once you start with local stack once again. But what if you want to share this particular AWS infrastructure with someone? Like, let us say we have got two developers here. We have got Alice, we have got Bob, and both of them are working on some Lambda functions, some SQS queues uh, here and there. And now things are running pretty hard for Alice. She wants some help uh, with some of the AWS infrastructure that she's testing upon. Using CloudPods, what she can do is like, she can save her entire local stack container state inside a CloudPod, and she can easily share it across using local stack web application or using a Git repository, or maybe like even uploading it to some Google Drive or Dropbox so that Bob can pull that cloud pod on his local machine and he can pretty much uh, like resume his local stack instance with that infrastructure that Alice has already created. So there are a lot of utilities for cloud pods. Like with cloud pods, you can pre-seed your test environments. Like just imagine having your CI pipeline where you need a few DynamoDB tables. What you can do is like you can create your infrastructure locally with those DynamoDB tables. You can save it as a cloud pod. You can push it to your CI. And now the CI has, has no need to create these infrastructure once again. They can pretty much use your already created infrastructure and they can test upon things altogether. And the best part about cloud pods is like you can actually reproduce your failures. Most of the times if you're pushing your AWS application to some CI uh, pipeline, and if the things fail, you have to actually go through all the logs to make sure that you're able to make some sense out of the entire thing. But with cloud pods, if something is failing out, you can easily convert that as a pod and you can share it across with your teammates or maybe you can pull it on your local machine so that you can start critically analyzing that. These are the things that you can possibly fix before you uh, make another commit to fix your application state. Now, since uh, we are almost running low on time, I had a pretty good demonstration for that, but I guess I'll skip it for this particular session, but I'll try to share it across on the Slack workspace so that everyone who's interested to get started with cloud ports, they can basically like try out that particular sample. And with all of this, uh, we are also inching towards the V2.0 release. So this 2.0 release will be coming at the end of this month. And with 2.0, uh, we are gonna have a lot of exciting features altogether. We are going to have cross-service IAM enforcement. So it means uh, that classic IAM issue that I got into, no one else will get into that because they have to enforce that they are using the correct IAM policies and they are not actually skipping on that. Apart from this, we have a new snapshot persistence, which has some more flexible strategies to load and save. And this is gonna be quite useful for developers who are trying to use persistence to make sure that their AWS infrastructure is saved locally. And apart from this, we have some new uh, like providers for both Lambda and S3, because these are the two features that most of the uh, local stack users are pretty much working upon. And this has got some pretty good parity and performance in comparison to the real AWS. 
So if you want to check out uh, all of these details and if you want to be a part of the local stack journey, you can pretty much go on our GitHub repository, maybe drop a star and be a part of our discussions over here. And on top of that, we want to hear from you. Like we want to hear from you about how do you want to use local stack? How would you use local stack and what kind of AWS services or APIs that you would like to use? So we are completely open source, uh, as you might have noticed on local stack itself, but there are some closed source components as well. So you can be mindful about that. And for any kind of queries, you can maybe reach out to us on our discuss forum, or maybe you can create an issue, or maybe you can send us a message so that we can pretty much get onto these details and we can help you out in getting started with local stack. And that was pretty much everything. So thanks a lot for being a patient listener. And I guess I am completely open to any kind of questions or thoughts or any kind of feedback over here right now, except the one AWS application that didn't work out. That was my bad. <laughs>